my entire presentation is themed off of a barbecue because every time I said, let's brisket, all I thought of was putting meat on fire. So I did create this entire presentation with brisk because why not? It's the one time I can create a presentation and not feel guilty that I made it with AI. So we're going to go down the path of what is AI, brisk teaching, and then how it can spice up your classroom. Get ready to add some flavor to our teaching techniques. It, it came up with all of these quotes, so this is amazing. Brisk is actually an extension. So if you want to use it with all of these different tools, we're going to have to get that extension at the Chrome Web Store. Okay, so we're going to try this out. You're going to go to this link, and I'm going to okay, so I'm going to put it in the chat for our lovely session attendees here. And if you aren't in the chat and you're watching our video, what you're going to want to do is go to the Chrome Web Store. So just Google Chrome Web Store, and then you're going to look for the Brisk Teaching. AI app. Once you grab that, you're going to want to go here to your extensions in Chrome, manage your extensions, make sure it is turned on, and then you're going to want to pin it. You're going to put a pin in it. This is a good time to put a pin in something. So once you pin it, it's going to be up here on your taskbar, and then it's going to start showing up in all of your Google tools. Okay. So it won't show up if you haven't turned it on. And if you haven't pinned it, but once you've got it in your taskbar and you got it all in there, so it works with these tools. It's not quite in sheets yet, quite disappointment on my behalf, but it does work with YouTube videos, Google Docs, Google Forms, Google Slides, and on various websites throughout the web. I haven't quite figured out exactly which ones work and which ones don't. It really works really well with websites that have articles and things like that. So I'm going to model that and show you what I mean by that today. So we're going to start off with the first thing, which is creating sort of a lesson together. And we're going to grill up a topic today. And I've decided to do layers of the earth. Okay. I'm going to start with YouTube, but because to be blatantly honest with you, I don't want to come up with any ideas on my own. So I found a YouTube video that's everything you need to know about planet Earth, and it has the different layers of the Earth. Now, I do <laughs> give you the caveat that before you grab a YouTube video and just start playing with it, you potentially should watch it first. So what you can do is you can create a quiz from that video. You can create various documents from that video, like DOK levels video outlines, a vocabulary list. And so I'm going to show you some of those. So I'm going to go here to YouTube. I should have that video open. So it's right here. And over here, it's really hard to see. And I tried to blow it up and it didn't seem, oh, it did. It just wasn't working. So if you go here, you're going to see a little brisk logo. So once there's a brisk logo here, then you can brisk it. So you click on it. I like how it seems it color coded. Here are some options that you can do. You can create something, change levels. You can create a presentation or a quiz from this, or you can create DOK questions. So it will take that transcript and the information that's within this video, and it's automatically going to create things for you. So if I go here to create, you're going to notice that there's a whole lot of other things that can make quizzes, rubrics, lesson plans translation, science labs, or something else. So you can actually treat it like generative AI tool and then just straight up ask it for anything. Okay, so I'm going to go back. And what I'm going to start out with is a quiz. So I'm going to go here to quiz. And I want to create a quiz about this YouTube video, including information about the different layers of the earth. Now, this is important. Because I have done this multiple times, I forgot to change the language. But what's awesome is you can change the language. So I originally had it in Spanish. I don't know if you saw that real quick. I'm going to go back to English, but it has a whole slew of different languages you can use. You can choose what types of questions. Right now, it only works with multiple choice, short answer, and long responses. And then I want to say, let's say I want to have about five questions, and then you are very much wanting to specify what grade 
And with Ten and Neat, and I already did this, so you can select standards. So I have New Mexico, so it does have us in there. <laughs> they know we're in America. There's science, sixth grade, strand, and then I looked up Earth, and I went ahead and found Earth systems and the flow and processes of Earth, and I hit done, and now it's going to match all that stuff. So you do have to do a little bit of, like, pre-work, but once you put all that stuff in there, I'm going to say next. I want to create this in a Google form, so I'm going to select the Google form option and then just hit brisket. That's why I said it's brisket. Absolutely love that whole phrase. I have one already built, so if this does take a ridiculous amount of time, I have a backup. I always have a backup to my backup. It's going to create a brand new tab right here, and it's going to open up Google Forms. And then it's going to create that quiz, and then down here on the bottom, it's going to have the emblem, and then it's going to say generating. I don't usually touch anything because sometimes I've tried to edit things or do it while it's still generating. And then it makes it mess. So wait until it stops generating. And it created this entire quiz right from that video. Now, what's really cool about this is it's not just a Google form. It actually makes it as a Google Forms quiz. So it has the answer key. It has the points. It has the questions. It has everything there. Okay. Now, I'm going to go to the one I already made because for some reason, first I can't want to show up on that one. Now you can risk within a Google form. It doesn't have a lot in forms. I'm going to impress you with other ones later. But you can add more questions. So now you can say, I want to have an extra question that has maybe I missed something or I want to change something in here. And you can. The only thing is make sure you change this to add one or two questions or it's going to add five more. Okay. So on this presentation, which I'm going to give you, and I'll link it in the description on the YouTube video as well as to attendees, but I got you. It gives the information about this in here, and then it also has information about ways that you can use Brisk for these specific things. So that's Google Forms, creating quizzes. Another thing you can ask it to do is, can you please create exit ticket for me? Can you create a pre and post assessment form? Can you create a survey? Can you create a peer evaluation? And it will do that for you within Google Forms. So Brisk is a pretty cool tool. It doesn't have to work straight out of YouTube. It can work within other tools. Okay, now I'm just pulling from YouTube because I wanted source material. Thing you can use Brisk, kind of cool, is Google Docs. So in Google Docs, there's so much you can do because it doesn't only work in creating something, it also works in providing feedback for something that a student's done. So I'm going to show you how that works too. Okay, so I went back to that YouTube video, and now we're going to create a doc from that YouTube video. I'm going to go to Create, and now I want to create a lesson plan. So I'm going to click on Lesson Plan. But you might want to put some specific things in here. So you might want to put this ESL strategy within assessment, idea, and vocabulary. So like those elements you want with this, I still kept this sixth grade, and then it really does cater this to the amount of time. So I'm just going to change it to 40 minutes. And then once again, you hit brisket. Now the thing with brisket is it does create it in a brand new tab, and all of those tabs are saved in your drive. So in my drive, they're saved within just your straight my drive space. So you might have to move them later or you might want to rename them. Don't do it while it's risking it. But afterwards, it's yours, so you can change it or edit it however you like. So now I have a lesson plan within here that matches that video. And I'll scroll up so you can kind of see some of those things. It has the academic standards, an introduction, a video presentation, which we'll get to that in a second, vocabulary words. It gave me some ESL strategies, which was fun, and even some extension ideas. Now it says I can brisk it further. So here I can either make it shorter or longer. Or if you close this out, you can hit brisk within docs and you can keep creating within the same doc. So now when it says something else, I'm going to say I want a list of vocabulary words that go with this lesson. 
and I brisk it, it's going to continue in that same document, but pulling that same information both from the document and from the YouTube video and adding that in that same space. So now it has the vocabulary words, it has an activity, and then you can even say, I would also like to brisk like a worksheet. Like now what I really want to show you, you can use brisk for student work as well. So here is an essay. In Brisk, there's an opportunity to give feedback. So I'm going to go to give feedback and you can do it based off rubric criteria, flows and grows, or have targeted feedback. Now, I really wish that I had a rubric that I could grade this. Don't worry about it. I'm going to go back. I'm going to close this out. And here, I'm going to go to create. And guess what? There's a rubric. So now I'm going to say I want a rubric to grade this science essay list. I'm going to brisk it. I have a four point scale and then it's going to build it inside the student doc. I had already built it before. It looks a little bit awful at first, like wait for the magic to happen. OK, and then it's going to morph it into a table format. And now that I have a rubric in that space, I can go to give feedback based on rubric create criteria. So I want three targeted ideas for this essay, one that's positive, two constructive, here in the rubric. And then when I brisk it, it's going to pull from that actual rubric and give me that specific information. You can either copy all of those ideas or you can just copy one or two of them and stick them in here. I'm just going to go ahead and copy all and insert. It's going to put that feedback on the top. Now, if you say, well, I don't want to have to go through every single one of my students, this also works here in Google Classroom. So within Google Classroom, because it still works within the Google domain, it can still function within that space. So what I mean by that is I'm going to go to my Google Classroom. I have that same student essay as an assignment here. And after the student has turned it in, I can go to review work. So this is Build a Google Doc and I still have that extension running, it works here within Google Classroom. So now I can go here, I can give feedback, and I can give targeted feedback. And the targeted feedback is interesting because it actually highlights places within the document and it makes it as a comment. So now it's